Okay, let's go ahead and continue our discussion about these two sample hypothesis testings. So as I said before, we got to kind of tweak our, um, our hypotheses so that they actually work with these two samples. So originally when we wrote out our null hypothesis and our alternative hypothesis, we were doing something like mu equals seven, the true mean of some population is equal to seven, and but the alternative, we think that it's actually less than seven. All right, so that's for like if we did, this is for one sample. Now let's go ahead and kind of show how we're going to expand this to use for two samples. Uh, so we've got to look at it in, there's going to be kind of three different types because we have to handle uh, proportions. We've got to handle match pairs. It's a little different. And then we also have to handle um, our two sample independent um, just tests of the means. So let's start off with match pairs. So match pairs. is going to look like this. The null hypothesis, we're going to start off by saying mu sub d. Okay, and then the alternative hypothesis is still going to be mu sub d. And the baseline assumption is that this is going to be equal to zero. So remember in the previous video, I talked about how like an example of match pairs is going to be twin tests. Um, well, with the twin testing, we are really interested in how one twin behaved versus another twin in the study. And so we can compare those, we take the difference between those, and then we calculate out our hypothesis test or our statistics based on those differences. That's why we're looking at the mean of the differences. Baseline assumption, uh, at least for right now, is that it is equal to zero. There's no difference between the two groups. And then we can go and say that it's either greater than, less than, or not equal to zero. And that's how we'd handle match pairs. Okay, so for our two sample independent, so we'll do two independent. This is what it's going to look like. We've got the null hypothesis is equal to mu1 minus mu2 is equal to zero. Just like kind of with the match pairs, the baseline assumption is that the average, that the true population mean of group one is equivalent to the true population mean of group two. I like to write it like this, and a lot of software writes it out like this. However, you will also see it in literature written like this. Mu1 is equal to mu2. Just pull it to the other side of the equation. This is a semicolon, not a J, just so you knew that. Okay, and then the alternative hypothesis here is that mu1 minus mu2 is greater than, less than, or not equal to zero. And then alternatively, we could do the same thing. Mu1 is greater than, less than, not equal to zero. Oh, sorry. Not zero, mu two. So when we establish these equations, it's going to be really important to establish which group is mu one and which group is mu two, so that by the time we read our reach our conclusions, that the conclusions and the like confidence interval statements that we're making actually reflect our original hypotheses. So it's always going to be a good thing to actually state out what is mu1 and mu2. Okay, finally, for our proportions. So we've got two proportions. Okay, you can take it kind of similarly how we saw the, the two, independent, uh, two independent means how there's two different ways you could write it. You can write it two different ways too with the proportions, but I'm just gonna write it in the format how I like, um, which is the null hypothesis is gonna be P1 minus P2 equals zero. And the alternative is just going to be P1 minus P2, and then we've got greater than, less than, not equal to zero. So those are really like the four different hypotheses that we can go down. I'm going to dive into the specifics of each of these. 
uh, so that we can like get a little bit of a better feel of what's actually going on. Uh, but hopefully that this is going to start getting us thinking about, hey, now we're dealing with two uh, different samples that we have to deal with. And writing our hypotheses is going to be a little different than how we first were writing them with just our one sample.